in my last video, I talked about playing baseball because it was thundering outside and then randomly out of absolutely nowhere a few days later, YouTube recommended Twilight Free with ads. What is this if not a sign to have my next video be about Twilight? And so that's why we're here. I used to be obsessed with this series back in fifth grade, like when I first encountered it. And I was very adamantly heavily Team Edward for myself, for myself. And let's be honest, who was ever Team Edward or Team Jacob for Bella, right? Like we were all Team Alice for her. Anyway, so I last watched these movies around the same time. So like fifth grade when I was like 11 years old. And I don't remember anything except I didn't like the sex scenes in Breaking Dawn and I'm pretty sure that's the reason I never watched these movies again and also I thought Jacob was very annoying. I thought he was so annoying and not just because I was team Edward but because Jacob is just annoying like there's I don't have like I don't know what else to tell you he was annoying. We'll cover the other movies and other videos because I do film edit export and upload using my phone and she just doesn't have the capacity to handle what could potentially be a six hour long video so let's talk twilight we start off strong with bella saying i never gave much thought to how i was going to die but dying in the place or going in the place of somebody i love seems like the way to go we get our iconic blue tint which is different watching people talk about it and reacting to it and watching it yourself you know what i mean and bella is there she's holding her little tiny baby cactus as she's getting ready to get on the plane and stuff or get in the car get on the plane whatever She's on a little tiny head kiss, and all I can think about is in the parody of Twilight, Vampires Suck, the Bella there has this giant freaking cactus, and it's hilarious. She's still in turn monologuing about how this is the reason she's going to live with her dad. I don't remember her being this dramatic, because what do you mean, I didn't give much thought to I was going to die, but going in the place of somebody I love seems like the way to go, which is why I'm going to go live with my dad, huh? Did I miss here? Did I miss here? So that's our main character, Isabella, aka Bella Swan. She currently lives in Phoenix, Arizona with her mom and her stepdad, Phil, who's like a minor league baseball coach or baseball player or something like that. I don't really know. Her dad lives in Forks, Washington. It's a really small town way up in Washington. And she's going to go live with him because she wants her mom to be able to travel with Phil because he travels a lot for his little baseball stuff you know like the self-sacrificing queen she is she's like okay so i'll go live with dad so you don't have to stay at home and watch out for me because you know she's like what 17 bella is still monologuing while she's in the car with charlie driving back home from the airport and she's talking about how forks washington there's a population of like 3120 people and how her dad is the chief of police around these parts and you know what they finally speak they finally you don't understand charlie is like oh you your hair got longer and she's like i actually cut it since i last saw you girl do you not understand that he's just trying to have a conversation with you like when was the last time he saw you what like 10 years ago or something like maybe longer how's he supposed to know how do you keep him updated with every single haircut you have i didn't think so throw this man a bone okay like let him live give him a break and you know what charlie is a real mvp here because you know what he could have very easily just been like mm, no I don't want you coming here, sorry, and none of this would have happened. None of this would have happened. Renee would still be watching over you while Phil toured wherever he traveled, wherever he does. And they get home and Charlie is like leading her up to her room and he's like, oh, I cleared out some shelves for you in the bathroom. And she's like, oh, I forgot one bathroom. What? Girl, how many bathrooms do two people need? How many bathrooms did you have when it was just you, Renee, and Phil? Like, how many, like one bathroom is more than enough whatever 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 they stand around awkwardly in her room for a while and then charlie leaves and she's like one of the best things about charlie he doesn't hover girl i wonder why you are not like conversing with him every time he tries to like pick a conversation you're just like i could have since i last night girl anyway billy and jacob block pull up and she goes down to talk with them she greets billy and then billy goes off to like fake fight with charlie whatever it's a bro thing that they do i guess and jacob he was just standing there smiling behind billy he's like hi i'm jacob um we used to make mud pies together and she's like yeah here charlie and billy come back they're like oh this truck is for you by the way and we get our first real emotion from billy and she's like oh my gosh wow this is so cool jacob's like yeah i helped fix it up she's like oh i can drive you to school tomorrow if you want and he's like oh i go to school on the res reservation and she's like oh yeah that sucks would have been nice to have a familiar face at school which you know what fair enough but also she never thinks charlie or billy or jacob for this cool truck she doesn't thank charlie for 
anything for majority of the movie okay it's really annoying and very not cool of her also isn't jacob supposed to be like 14 or 15 he's still a kid what do you mean we used to make mud pies together as a kid shut up you're gonna look at jacob taylor lautner and you're gonna try and convince me that this dude is 14 to 15 years old give me a break she goes to school she meets eric the eyes and ears of the place the shoulder to cry on and he's like oh my god you're the best one your front page baby and she's like oh my god no 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 please don't don't it's like oh my god chill okay no feature no feature just relax and now she's in gym class they're playing volleyball and you know what? i can't even make fun of her because she is me she is me just awkwardly standing around not sure what to do with your limbs but the difference is i don't hit people in the head with volleyballs i was usually the one who got hit in the head with a basketball due to no fault of my own okay but that's like a story for another time but on the other hand not so lucky she happens to hit our good buddy old pal mike newton in the head but it's okay he doesn't really seem to mind maybe she knocked something loose in there or maybe it's just a new girl effect but he seems to be instantly in love with her he goes all starry-eyed jessica comes up to them and is all passive aggressive like aren't aren't people from arizona supposed to be like <laughs> tan and you know bella does her well maybe that's why they kicked me out bella is so funny and i don't think she tries and you know what iconic anyway they're in the cafeteria now and i personally do not like this opening scene in the cafeteria because bella's sitting in the middle mike is on one side and eric is on the other and she to me looks uncomfortable eric is all hey mike did you meet my homegirl bella mike is all like your homegirl yeah <laughs> your homegirl yeah lol random dude the same dude by the way who was like nice ride comes up kisses her on the cheek goes my girl yanks mike's chair out from under him and starts running and mike starts chasing him i think this is supposed to be tyler but like i'm not really sure because you know we haven't really had any interactions with him he never introduces himself throughout this entire movie like that was weird that was weird why would you kiss somebody on the cheek like that you don't know her like that Blah really really uncomfortable moment angela clicks a picture of bella she's like it's for the feature eric for no reason is so unnecessarily aggressive to her. she's like angela the feature's dead don't bring it up again how dare she not know that the feature's dead when nobody bothered to tell her like how dare she just not know <laughs> sorry about that eric walks away angela is like oh okay well i guess it's okay i'll just run another article about teen drinking bella's like i mean you could always do eating disorders or uh speedo padding on the swim team and for some reason these are the best ideas angela and jessica have ever heard in their entire life but on to more important things the cullens come in in pairs first rosalie and emmett and then alice and jasper and what's her name jessica is telling bella all about them and i used to be such a they're not actually related it doesn't matter like stop being weird and a hater jessica person but now i'm like you know what she's got a point if a bunch of you people moved to my small town and started attending my small town high school and they were being fostered by the same people and they all lived together and they didn't talk to anybody they didn't interact with anybody except each other and the teachers and they were all dating i would be weirded out i would be weirded out i i would mind my own business but i would be very concerned and very confused and then edward comes in and jessica does her whole yeah he's the only single one but don't bother like <laughs> none of us are good enough for him haha <laughs> like i don't care like i don't care like i mean why would you think that haha <laughs> that whole thing and bella is immediately immediately entranced by his giant rectangular head and single status no offense to robert pattinson i was recently watching jenny nicholson's video about the vampire diaries again and she talked about how stefan salvatore from the vampire diaries and edward cullen from twilight both have giant rectangular heads and i can't stop thinking about it and i think about it and i laugh to myself at least three times a day like a psycho no offense to robert pattinson i thought he was a very compelling vampire when i first watched these movies as well just saying let's talk about the important things why did the cullens walk in separately like that like what happened to solidarity what just because edward's single he deserves to walk alone rude bella and edward stare at each other edward gives her a stink eye across the cafeteria and then later on in the classroom because they say share biology together he glares her down she enters the biology classroom she hands the slip of paper for her teacher to sign because it's like a thing she needs to do she stands there for the fan and her scent blows over to him and he instantly clenches up and starts clutching his nose like this like, whatever conveniently bella is supposed to sit right next to him and he clenches up even worse and he's just like 
if I was Bella, I don't know how I would have reacted, but it would not have been good because he's clenched up so tight. It's like he's about to throw up. He's clenching his nose as if he smelled the foulest thing ever. Rude. Extremely rude. But like, apparently this is because she smells oh so good. She's like the best smelling thing he's ever smelled. That doesn't seem like the reaction of somebody who smelled the most scrumdilicious thing ever. But like, what do I know? What do I know? All I know is that if I smell something that was so scrumptious, I would not have reacted like that. I would not have reacted like that. I would have, you know, been sniffing like crazy because who doesn't like enjoy good smells, you know? Like, especially food <laughs> that smells good, you know what I mean? I heard that in Edward's point of view of Twilight, he has fantasies about tearing apart every single person in that classroom just because Bella's blood puts him that on edge because she's like his blood singer, his vampire mate, whatever. But like, I need to read that book to figure out what's going on here because what? That's actually, that's actually insane. That's crazy. He spent the rest of class period just staring at her like she's his worst enemy, like he's holding back the most biggest shit of his life. And then he rushes out of the classroom with a singular book as soon as the bell rings. At the end of the day, Bella goes to the front office to hand in her signed piece of paper from all the teachers, right? And she sees Edward there. What is Edward trying to do? Switch out of the biology class like a loser idiot? Except there are no other biology classes open, so he sees her, he's like, fuck, guess I'll have to endure it, and like, the meanest way possible, he rushes out. I would have started crying. I would, I would have started crying. I'm sorry, Bella. I would have started crying. She doesn't even end up doing what she came there to do. Like, she rushes out a few seconds later, right after him. She meets Charlie in a diner, and a very minor interaction happens that's kind of important for later, but they meet this dude. This dude comes up to their table, table. his name is Wayland aka buttcrack santa he was Santa one time when um what's her name bella celebrated christmas with charlie still i guess pre-divorce he introduces himself he leaves but there's a scene where bella like shakes a ketchup bottle over her burger and fries but doesn't actually take any ketchup which is hilarious i don't know why that had happened she goes home and she tells herself she's like tomorrow i'm gonna rip edward a new one i'm gonna interrogate why he's so mean to me blah 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 except the next day edward isn't at school He's actually not in school for the next few following days. Oh my god, and guess what song he's playing? The Hoa 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 song. The Hoa 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 Hoa. The most iconic Twilight season, Twilight song. We cut scenes real quick, shift point of view to this dude in a hard hat who's running through like a construction site or something. He's grabbed by three people. We, we only see like the shadows of it and he, he's not beat up so much as immediately killed on the spot. But that's that for that. That's that for that. Let's go back to our main character, Bella, and what she's up to. She's coming out of her house and immediately slips on ice with literally little to no reaction. And it's an iconic scene. You wouldn't get it like I do. Charlie helps her up and is like, oh, hey, by the way, I changed the tires of your truck because they were getting bald and also put chains on them because they were not suitable for this weather. And also, don't wait up for dinner. I have a case to take care of. A, to take care of. There was like some sort of attack. Bella finally thanks him for something. She's like, oh my god, thank you for the tires and stay safe. She goes to school, you know, it's like all rainy and gloomy, extra gloomy, extra rainy, extra snowy. She's going to biology class. She takes off her coat to put on the coat rack. They have a coat rack in the classroom. Are you kidding me? Did other people have coat racks in their classrooms? I didn't. We just hung our jackets on the back of chairs like normal people. She's talking to Eric. I think Eric is trying to ask her something. Mike comes up out of nowhere and starts shaking his hat all over Bella's head, getting like what's it called water drop like, i would be so pissed so annoying bella has little to no reaction she just kind of walks away he deserves at least a punch or a kick for that but whatever anyway guess who's at the table edward stink face cullen he's just sitting there like, as if nothing happened she sits there awkwardly i guess she gave up on her plan to like grill him about being so rude because you know what actually same She's had a few days to think it over. Maybe she lost confidence or maybe she's just like, it's not worth it anymore. Let me ignore him. But Edward, Edward is not having any of that. He's like, oh, you want to ignore me now? No, thanks. He's like, hi, we didn't get to meet last week. I'm Edward and you are Bella. Like, thanks. Like, how's she even supposed to respond to that? You know what I mean? They start doing their little onion root assignment, whatever. And Bella's like, you were gone last week. It's like not even a question. She literally just says, you were gone for a few days. And he's like, yeah out of town visiting my family in alaska do you like the rain and she's like are you seriously asking me about the weather and he's like oh i i guess i am he seems so unsure of himself and they are both so awkward it's hilarious 
to me and she's like i don't like anything cold right right okay bella that's so funny you say that let's see how long that lasts he's like so why'd you move to why'd you move to forex and she's like it's kind of complicated it's kind of complicated i personally don't feel like it's that complicated and it's really not either when she explains she's like yeah so my mom remarried this dude phil and that's it that's the conversation and then they continue with their um assignment and then he is walking with her after class in the hallways i if i was bella i would have thought this was the biggest prank because how is he going to go from one day look at me like i committed a personal crime against him and then the next day he's being all buddy buddy with me i i would not have no 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 anyway he's asking why she didn't move with her mom and phil and she's like well he's a minor league baseball something 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 and i just wanted my mom to be able to spend time with him and edward is like are you unhappy and she's like why why would you ask that like no like no and he's like i'm just trying to figure you out she stares at him for a bit and she's like your eyes they're different and he's like <sighs> they're fluorescents and then he just stomps off weirdo but it's okay it's okay because they're still staring at each other from across the parking lot until tyler's van comes careening towards bella out of absolutely nowhere because you know the ice is icing it's slippery the van is out of control what an iconic scene edward comes out of nowhere and stops it and then like boy how are you gonna stare at her make eye contact with her for like five seconds and then try to gaslight her into thinking she's crazy later on and also how did literally nobody see him hopping over the bed of the trunk trunk how did nobody see him hopping over the bed of the truck like he didn't even use vampire speed or anything he was just like parkour hop she's in the hospital there's nothing wrong with her um Tyler is actually more injured, but whatever, that's not really important. Dr. Cullen, Carlisle Cullen, the dad of the Cullens, he comes in and he checks her. He's like, you're good to go. You're good to go. And Bella's like, your son saved me, Edward. It's crazy. He was across the parking lot. If he had him in there, I would have been dead. And, Carl and Carlisle was just like, you're a very lucky person. <laughs> Charlie tells Bella that she should go call her mom while he does like, fills out the discharge papers or whatever bella goes over the side to like call her mom except she sees edward arguing with carlisle and one of his sisters and she just kind of stands there like looking at them and they all turn simultaneously to stare at her and it's very creepy except it's okay because she was staring at them creepily first so this time this time and only this time it cancels out she's like edward can i talk to you and this is where he starts gaslighting her she's like I want to know what happened like you were totally across the parking lot how did you get there so fast he's like no i wasn't no i wasn't you're you're just imagining things i was literally right next to you she's like no you are not and he's like yeah i was how else would i be able to help you and she's like i don't know that's what i want to know he's like well no one's going to believe you that i pushed that i stopped the van you know what's funny funny is that the alternative is that bella's head <laughs> made the dent in tyler's van and also that she somehow came away from that perfectly unharmed. She's like, I'm not going to tell anyone anyway. I just want to know what happened and I will keep it to myself. And he's like, get over it. And I hope you enjoy disappointment. Girl, he's such a loser. He's such a loser. He's such a loser. It's good on Bella for staying her ground and not giving in to the gaslightation. Now nighttime and he's watching over her, watching her sleep, which is, you know, totally not weird, creepy or gross this is the first time she catches him but like he's gone by the time she fully registers and she's like oh that's the first time i dreamed about him <laughs> they're going on a field trip with their biology class jasper and alice are there for literally no reason like i don't know they're just there they're going on a field trip bella's leaning against her truck as everybody like gets onto the bus and the teacher's like telling them about the field trip and blah 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 everyone comes by and just stands a few yards away and stares at her again what a weirdo what a creep mike also comes up he starts talking to her but she doesn't really listen because you know she's too busy having a staring contest with edward stink face stupid freaking face cullen she's like wait what did you say and mike is like oh um do you do you want to go to prom with me and bella's like ew no way you suck you're a loser but you know who doesn't think you suck and who doesn't think you're a loser jessica you should probably ask her and anyway i'm gonna be in jacksonville that weekend so i can't come anyway he's like oh okay i guess creepy edward is creepy and as she's literally walking in the greenhouse by herself he comes up to me he's like what's in jacksonville and she's like 
how do you know about that he's like you didn't ask my question she's like well you never answered any of mine and also you didn't say hi to me girl boss she's a girl boss she's a girl's girl and she's funny i like her edward is like fine it was an adrenaline rush okay you know what an adrenaline rush is or are you too stupid to know what, what an adrenaline rush is it was an adrenaline rush <laughs> adrenaline rush that helped me push the van away and Belle was like oh yeah well guess what's in florida floridians good on her for not believing his stupid bs she trips and he gets all angry at her for some reason he's like ah, can you watch where you're going actually look i'm sorry i'm so rude all the time but before you can say anything else jessica comes up all happy because you know mike asked her to prom and edward stomps away because he has issues they're all getting back on the bus bella is you know walking by herself to the bus edward stomps up to her again all angry he's like we shouldn't be friends. You stay away from me. Girl, she's not the one who's always popping up around you. Like, you're always the one approaching her and you're watching her sleep. You're the creepy creep 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 Eddie. And she's like, well, maybe if you regret saving me, you should have just let me die with a van. Dramatic Bella makes an entrance and he's like, you think I regret saving you, you stupid, stupid girl? I mean, you've only given her all the reason to think that you do, but whatever. Alice and Jasper come up, come up and Alice is like, hi, are you staying with us? And Edward is like, no our bus is full and then he climbs in all all angrily i'm upset about this i'm upset about this because you know what that's the bus that bella was headed towards before edward came and now he's going to steal that bus and make her sit elsewhere no and you're gonna make her think that you don't regret saving her you're such a loser you're such a whiny little baby loser these mixed signals are so annoying they're so annoying they're going back to glaring at each other across the cafeteria and edward is taking out all his anger on the food like bella you know, just she, he sees Bella and suddenly he's like throwing his food back on the tray with a little mean stink face on. Jessica, Angela, Eric, Mike, and Tyler are making plans for La Push and they invite Bella and Bella's like, okay, yeah, I can come. She goes to get her lunch and guess who shows up? Creepy Eddie. She accidentally drops an apple because, you know, he startles her and it bounces off the foot of his, the, off the toe of his shoe. It bounces off his shoe and he catches it. That's a really really aerodynamic apple you know what i'm saying he's all like i only said it's better if we're not friends not that we shouldn't be friends but if you know what's smart if you're smart you'll stay away from me once again edward she's not the one who just shows up randomly and starts making conversation giving mixed signals and overall just being a weirdo creep He's all edgelord, like, I'm the villain, raw, and she's all, that's just a mask you put on, I can see through it, and she invites him to a push. He, you know, is all like, oh, uh, sorry, can't come, it's like, really crowded. He's such a bad liar, they're all so awkward. For some reason, a lot of the people whose, like, reaction videos I watch to Twilight do not like the beanie hat thing that Bella's wearing to La Push, but I think it's cute. The only issue is that it like doesn't pull down all the way over her ear, so it's like a weird length in my opinion. But overall, I think it's cute. Angela is telling Bella, she's like, you know, I keep thinking Eric will ask me to prom, but he just hasn't. Girls, girl, feminist icon Bella is like, you should just ask him. Take charge. Jacob comes up with his two friends, I think, Emery and Quill. Jessica's like, you should keep Bella company, her date build. And one of them is like, the cones don't come here with the biggest eye roll. And it's like, relax, relax. She didn't know anything about that. No need to be so rude. Bella walks away with Jacob and she's like, so um, what did your friend mean by the cones not coming to a push? And Jacob is like, oh, you caught that? No, no, she didn't. She didn't. Like, it's not like your friend just said it and there was so much volume and nobody was silent after. Jacob Black is part of the Quilia tribe, which really exists and Steffi Meyer did them so dirty. Jacob tells Bella about the Quilliet being descendants of wolves and the Cullens being descendants of an enemy tribe even though he's not supposed to just because Bella was like oh well I want to know pretty please 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 pretty please tell me. He also tells her about the treaty which is basically the Cullens stay off Quilliet land if they do not want their secret exposed by the Quilliet and this includes La Poche Beach. She's like but I thought they just moved here and he's like or oh, they moved back wink wink. Anyway we go over to some docks or like this dude in a boat he's just hanging out in a boat he's drinking by himself you know american pastime i don't know he gets killed by the murder trio which is victoria james and laurent who are the same people who killed the guy in the hard hat but this is the first time we get like a look at them it's a sunny day in forks washington and jessica and bella are hanging out outside in the courtyard of the school with all the other students sunbathing and taking in the sun the rare sun and jessica's like the clones aren't here because 
Dr. Colin and Mrs. Colin put them out and take them camping and hiking and all that fun stuff. My parents won't let me though, but like, whatever. Angela comes up to them and she's all happy. She hugs Bella. She's like, oh my god, I asked Eric, like you said, and he said yes. Oh my god. So they make plans to go dress shopping and Bella's like, oh, can I come along? And they're like, yeah, of course, we need your input. The reason Bella wants to go is because she did some little researching after she, you know, had a little talk with Jacob and she looked up Quillet Legends and she found this little bookshop that she wants to go to and get a book from. So now they're in Los Angeles. Los Angeles, that's not the place. Port Angeles, that's the place, God, sorry. They're in Port Angeles, they're trying on dresses. Bella, absolutely not interested, eventually becomes obvious to Angela and Jessica also. They're like, you're not interested in this, are you? And she's like, not really, but like, other dresses are good a nightmare to shop with truly jessica calls her she's like you said about the last five ones too and bella's like well they all look good some random creeps come by knock on the window and cat call them weirdos and bella's like okay well um i'm gonna go to this bookstop bookstop i'm gonna go to this bookstore that i wanted to go to i will meet you guys at the restaurant so she goes and by the time she gets out she gets her book and she's headed back to the restaurant it's nighttime she is cornered by the same creeps who cat called them through the window and they're like oh my god you're the girl from the dress shop ha 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 like hang out with us like they're drunk they're disgusting she manages to knee one of them in the balls and she's about to make a run for it but a shiny little car comes spinning in in this spin cool spin thing that i want to try but i'm too scared to because girl i'm not a vampire if i mess that up i'm done for sure and also the car damages not cool it's edward edward gets out of the car he's like bella get in the car he growls at the dudes and he also gets in the car and then drives off doing another spinny spin thing that I would love to try out. He's driving her back to the restaurant and he's like, talk to me, distract me. If you knew what those losers were thinking, you wouldn't, you, you, you'd be insane. Like, I'm sorry, Eddie. Like, I, no offense. I don't think you need to be able to read minds to understand what those creeps were trying to do, you know? Bella calls him out and she's like, what do you mean he's like i mean it's it's pretty obvious what they were thinking no duh idiot they pull up to the restaurant and angela and jessica are just leaving and they're like oh we're so sorry bella we tried to call you and text you but we were really hungry so we just ate this never sat right with me in the books either because what do you mean your friend went off to a bookstore in a place where she doesn't know anything she's new she doesn't have a car you are you are like the driver etc etc she went off to this place you tried to call, you tried to text her, she didn't answer, and you just went off to eat? Huh? Like, Bella should have definitely told them which, like, shop she was going to. They should have asked her which shop she was going to. That's, like, rule number one of hanging out with friends. Eddie buys her dinner, and she's like, how did you know I was there? Like, were you following me? And he's like, no, of course I wasn't following you. Like, why would why would you think I was following you? She gets up to leave, which is so girl boss of her, because, yeah he's done enough stupid lying and she's like he's like okay no 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 okay sit down fine yes i was following you but only because i feel weirdly protective of you like imagine what would have happened to you if i wasn't there when i started hearing what those creeps what those weirdos were thinking i just couldn't help but step in and she's like what do you mean like what do you like what do you what do you mean you heard what they were thinking? he's like i can remind so you like you can read minds and he's like yeah everybody's except yours and then he starts pointing to random people in the restaurant he's like sex 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 money cat sex if i was bella i would have called him a liar and a fraud and i would have been so offended because what like how convenient how convenient is it that we're in this restaurant out of everybody in this restaurant i'm the only one whose mind you can't read so i can't even ask questions to confirm whether or not you can read minds and everybody else can only think of one word sound sound sounds plausible yeah of course definitely but I'm not Bella and Bella is not me. So instead she's just like, is there something wrong with me? And he's like, no, but like, I don't know about that. I mean, if she's the only person whose mind you can't read kind of implies that something is wrong with her rather than you. And then he's like, I just don't have the strength to stay away from you anymore. Like you never did to begin with. You always went up to her and were like, you just stay away from me. You are such a loser such a loser he's driving her back to forks and they pass by the police station and see that both charlie and carlisle are still there so they pull over bella goes in because carlisle's like you should like you should go talk to your dad like it was his friend who died because it's wayland he is the dude who was killed most recently and he was a dude he was butt crack santa that they met in the diner oh my god so yeah bella's like oh my god dad i'm so i'm so sorry charlie's like well 
what can you do he hands her bear spray and they go back home and there's a little hilarious there's a hilarious research montage where you know bella's doing her research and the dots are connecting and things are starting to make sense and she pulls herself together and forms a good plausible theory about what edward could potentially be she goes to school the next day she stares edward down and then she just casually walks past him into the forest that's near the school and he knows immediately to follow her like seems very mind reading to me or i guess seems like you don't need to be able to read her mind to know what she wants you know what i mean whatever i guess they make like whatever we're not gonna think too much about it anyway they walk into this forest that nobody stops them from going into weird but you know the whole scene happens she's all like i know what you are and he's all like say it out loud say it and she's like vampire and he's like are you afraid she's like no he's like well you should be you need to see what i look like in the sunlight so he pulls her onto his back and runs up the mountain and he's so dramatic for no reason and then he throws the vibes off by sparkling like of all things stephanie meyer could have done to vampires she makes him sparkle for what reason like what was the reason it's so completely unnecessary this is the skin of a killer bella no you are a disco ball and you have to live with that for the rest of eternity relax bro relax tone down the edgelordness he has a weird meltdown and bella has not a single self-preservative bone in her body because she finds this crazy attractive for some reason she's like you won't hurt me <laughs> they're so weird they're so awkward like <laughs> he corners her against like i don't know a rock or something and he's like i i hated you so bad at first because i wanted you so bad girl shut up and then he's like you have to tell me what you're thinking because i can't read your mind and she's like i'm afraid he backs away he's like you should be she goes up to her, she's like not of you but afraid of losing you he's like and so the lamb or no he's like and so the lion fell in love with the lamb she's like what a stupid lamb he's like what a masochistic lion <laughs> what guys weird why are you guys weird like this also generally i feel like they have literally zero chemistry so far on screen they have maybe five conversations and edward's been a little mean and unnecessarily aggressive for all of them we get bella's inner monologue of the extremely iconic quote where she's like about three things i was absolutely positive first edward was a vampire second there was a part of him and i don't know how dominant that part might be that thirsted for my blood and third, I was unconditionally and irrevocably in love with him. Okay. I feel like it's definitely not been more than a month. And I understand, like, his obsession with her a little bit, I guess. Because, you know, she's his blood singer, she's his mate, or whatever. But, like, I feel like the pacing could have been better in the movies. Because I think, I'm pretty sure that the timeline was longer in the books point is in the movie i feel like it's been at most a month and for a majority of the time edward was giving her mixed signals and gaslighting her and being mean and rude for no reason but what do i know whatever edward drives her to school and everybody's staring at them and then it's either a random day or they skip school again but they're sitting in the forest and she's you know trying to figure out his lore and how vampires come to be and everything and he's telling her and he's like uh my family and i are vegetarians and it's a little inside joke because we only feed our animals and that's like eating tofu if you're human that's like eating only tofu for your entire life it's like it's enough to keep you alive but not enough to satisfy you not like how your blood would be <laughs> red flag major red flag major red flag bella has no reaction to that but that's such that's such they're so awkward like i don't even think he meant it like negatively like he, he was just genuinely awkward and that's what makes it worse <laughs> because it's like major foot and mouth syndrome major foot and mouth syndrome this guy and this gal right here so i can't even hold it against him but it is a red flag i can acknowledge that that is a red flag it might have been a slip of the tongue but still a red flag slip of the tongue creepy eddie is a lot less like constipated and a lot more chill now that they're together or whatever but um randomly a random day he just jumps out of nowhere on top of her truck and like i don't know how she didn't know he was there like his car is parked right behind her anyway um he just randomly is like i'm taking you to my house tomorrow to meet my family and then he leaves because he can you know hear billy and jacob coming up and they cannot interact because you know wolves vampires sworn enemies even though like the wolves haven't been introduced yet sorry for any spoilers Jacob Black is a werewolf. Charlie comes to bring Billy inside because they're going to be watching a game or something. And Charlie's like, you know, I don't think 
that those deaths were animal attacks and billy looks at bella and he's like i never thought they were and that's that edward takes bella to meet his family the next day and they're all so sweet making her food um rosalie is like is she even italian and emma goes her name is bella they're making her italian food and bella comes in and she's like oh my god you guys are so nice yeah of course i'll eat stupid edward is trying to ruin her life and ruin her image with her family already because he's like come on guys she already ate why are you like why are you speaking for her like i don't care if she already ate she was being nice and you know like i understand she was being considerate which is really nice of her genuinely very nice of her but she also said that she will eat just to like appease them you know and esme and carlisle and emmett and rosalie work so hard on this food and edward is coming up and ruining everybody's vi vibes edward is such edward is the real antagonist in this movie by my standard rosalie gets really upset about this and she breaks the salad bowl she's holding in her hands and she's like perfect do you know that this girl that this human is enough to ruin our family like he, something goes wrong and our whole family is incriminated is that the word implicated she's like this whole family will be implicated if this goes wrong sweet innocent bella is like i don't worry like i i won't tell anybody i pinky promise and rosie is like are you dumb and she's like oh you mean this could go wrong as in i become the mule bella is so funny and she doesn't even try i'm sorry i think she's funny there i said it if you don't think she's funny keep that to yourself i think she's hilarious things get a little bit awkward but alice and jasper come alice hugs her and she's like, I think we're going to be the best of friends. So a little rundown on Edward's family. There are six other people. Okay, so we've got Carlisle Cullen. He's the doctor. He's never had a drop of human blood in his entire life. And he's the oldest of them. He has impeccable control. He's an icon. Esme, she's his wife. And in the books, I think she's like a painter or an architect. But she's not really like talked about much in this movie particularly but she's awesome she's cool then we have emmett he's like strongest he's like the biggest of them all i don't know we have rosalie she's emmett's wife and um emmett's wife emmett's mate and also carlisle and esme are mates i should be saying mates rather than mary because like whatever they're mates emmett and rosalie are mates rosalie is like the prettiest girl in the entire world and also we're not supposed to like her because she's mean to bella but I think she has valid points. Jasper and Alice, they are mates. And Jasper, he can feel other people's emotions and also control them a little bit. And Alice can see visions of the future. So out of everybody, only Jasper and Alice and Edward have like real powers. And Edward, obviously, the creepiest of the bunch, his power is telepathy that's the word right telepathy for mind reading back to the story edward gives his entire family a rancid side eye and he's like okay right okay bella let's go up to my room he takes her up to his room and they're all like oh my god music oh my god so cool his room is really cool by the way there are so many windows there's this huge like glass door thing going on in his room that is wide open and i would love to have that for myself um they dance a little bit they talk about music a little bit she's like oh you don't have a bed he's like i don't i don't really sleep and then he jerks her onto his back and runs out the cool really cool window that i would like to have for myself and he calls her a spider monkey and he runs through the trees and he helps her climb onto the trees and everything and they're taking in the view i would love for that to be me I would not like to be manhandled or jerked around. I would not like to be called Spider Monkey, but I would very much like to be flown through trees and be shown a very nice, pretty view. We cut over to um, Charlie. He's tracking through the forest footprints and he's with his team and dogs and Victoria. She's running around barefoot, having a fun little time, leaving tracks, misleading them while James and Laurent are kind of just watching over through the forest creepily watching on and being creepy i don't know charlie is like these are human footprints and that's enough of that bella is pulling up to the diner to eat dinner with charlie and mike corners her outside and he's like so you and cullen huh um i don't like that i don't 
and i like that edward looks at you like he wants to eat you first of all no one asked you second of all she wants him to eat her so mind your own business mike later on bella's on the phone with her mom and her mom is like oh we might we're looking to rent a house in jacksonville we think things might be more permanent which is weird because i thought the reason bella had to go live with her dad in the first place was because things couldn't be permanent because phil has to be traveling all the time like what's going on here edward sneaks in through her window while she's having this conversation she hangs up and she's like do you do that often he's like yeah i yeah i do that often and instead of finding that finding that weird and creepy like it is she has no reaction to it and instead they start making out and then um he jerks away he's like oh my god i I underestimated my strength or whatever and then for some reason she's the one apologizing and asking him to stay I don't like that dynamic she asks him to stay they talk a little bit and then she falls asleep on him and remember when Bella was like I don't like anything cold well she likes that enough to spend the whole night cuddling with him isn't he supposed to be like hard as rocks or something it's not even comfortable Edward formally introduces himself to Charlie when he goes to pick up Bella to play baseball or softball I don't really know the difference between the sports don't attack me he goes to pick her up to play with his family because it's thundering outside and they only play when it's thundering outside because when they hit the ball it sounds like a crack of thunder a crack of thunder a clap of thunder i don't know it sounds like thunder basically so that's the only time they can play and this scene is as cool as iconic as it is laughable like i don't know like they they're so dramatic they're so serious about it for no reason halfway through the game um alice gets a vision that the murder trio are going to be crashing their game and so she calls it to a halt and they're like we have to get bell out of here but they're like it's too late like if we leave now they'll they'll smell her because of the wind or whatever so they just decide to confront them and the murder trio talks them into letting them play a round of baseball with them they're like we were leaving but we heard you playing and we would like to play come on it's, it's just one game so they agree and james and Edward, for some reason, are having a weird stare down. I don't know. I feel like, aren't they supposed to have enha enha well, aren't they supposed to have enhanced senses? Like, wouldn't they be able to spell smell? Oh my god, aren't they supposed to have enhanced senses? Shouldn't they be able to smell Bella regardless of wind or not? Anyway, just as James is about to turn away and join the game, a gust of wind blows by, and he gets a full whiff of Bella, and he's like, "You brought a snacky snack." Immediately both teams are you know crouching down and they're hissing at each other i'm so serious they are hissing at each other and laurent eventually manages to get james to back down and he's like i see that this game is over peace out edward rushes aggressively rushes bella into the jeep and he's like we have to go bella we're leaving we're going to vancouver like james is a very dangerous hunter tracker like he's caught you with and he's really dangerous because the way i reacted to him trying to trying to eat you the way i reacted to him trying to eat my girlfriend is going to make this an even more exciting chase for him and she's like dude what i can't leave my dad like what like I can't just leave and he's like well yeah you have to and she's like no so they argue a little bit and then eventually he caves and he's like you're gonna have to say something really mean to him to make to like let him like make him let you leave and she's like oh my god fine whatever so they do this whole drama this whole pretending drama thing where she pretends to break up with him and charlie's like whoa 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 what happened did he break up with you? she's like no i broke up with him because i realized that i like him too much and that i can't stay here poor charlie poor charlie he thinks this is all his fault and he's like Bella, look, I know I'm not the best dad. I'm not, I'm not. I know I'm pretty boring. I know I'm not the most fun. I can try to change. And she's so mean. She's like, dad, that's not what this is about. You think I honestly want to be stuck here like mom was? Low blow, low blow, evil, evil. So of course he's heartbroken and she just leaves. And she's like, I can't believe I to be so mean to Charlie. Meanwhile, James was kind of just creeping out their house while they're having this big argument, whatever. And that's weird because he was, you know, creeping out there outside their house. So how did he even get tricked in the first place? How did he even get tricked in the first place? Edward drives Bella. And as they're driving to his house, they pass by the diner and she sees her group of friends, her group of human friends. They're all leaving. They're having a good time and they're laughing. And it's so sad, you know, because like she could have been with them. She could have been with them if she wasn't so obsessed over this dude over creepy eddie the whole cullen family gets involved in keeping bella safe bella is sent off with alice and jasper too i don't really know phoenix we're gonna assume and i'm not really sure what anybody else does but edward tells rosalie and esme to put on bella's clothes to like try and trick james and edward can't go with bella because they're like james knows that you'll never leave bella by herself especially not now so they're like mind games 
mind games, Edward is not going to be with Bella. Jasper and Alice take Bella to a hotel room, and in this hotel room, Alice has a vision that Jas Jasper, that James didn't fall for their tricks for long. The trick that he was following was Edward, Emmett, and Rosalie with Bella's clothes on, roaring through the forest, rubbing Bella's clothes on like all over the place to like, you know, confuse him with the scent. He caught on pretty quickly and he turned around and followed another trail or something. And she gets another vision of like a ballet studio. And Bella's like, that's so funny that the arch there looks the same as the one as my old ballet studio but i bet that has nothing to do with us she gets a call from edward and edward is like okay so james caught on to the plan bella do not go anywhere alone at all and she's like yeah okay but of course of course while jasper and alice are not in the room she gets a call from home her home in phoenix and she hears our mom's voice panicking me like bella bella where are you bella and then she hears james and he's like it's so easy to manipulate humans girl he's like it's so easy to manipulate humans if you want your mom safe show up to your old ballet studio all by yourself so of course you know she heads to the ballet studio all by herself what an idiot alice and jasper are such bad guards by the way because like they're just in the lobby of the hotel room or whatever right bella slips past them so easily weren't they supposed to have enhanced senses like how is the most delicious smelling human going to walk past you and you're not even going to know as she's in the taxi we get a repeat of her inner monologue from the start of the movie where she's like i never thought much about how i go but going in the place of somebody i love seems like the way to go and then she pulls up to her old ballet studio armed with nothing except the bear spray her dad gave her she goes in lo and behold humans are so easy to manipulate she hears her mom's voice being like bella bella where are you it's a recording it's an old recording from when she was a child and james you know rummaged through her house because he got her address from freaking forks directory and he snuck into her house and i guess looked through all their stuff to find this how much how much stuff how many videos would he have had to look through to come across this one video the, the situation is so much more hilarious if you just think about that right but like also what, what was i saying anyway james comes up to her behind her and he's like humans are so manipulable well he pulls out this camera and he's like i'm going to record myself tricking your blood and killing you and i'm gonna send it to edward he he bella's like edward has nothing to do with this i mean i don't know did you miss the whole thing where they they were leaving town but they only turned that turned back because they heard the baseball game and they wanted to play and you happen to be at the baseball game because you're dating edward and the only reason james is so adamantly hunting you down is because of edward's reaction towards you Edward literally himself said, my reaction to towards you, towards, like, towards you, like, set him off. James is like, I mean, yeah, him trying so hard to protect you made this game so much more interesting. He starts recording, she sprays him with a bear spray, and it works for literally 0. 0.00001 second. She makes a run for it, doesn't really work, obviously. He catches her, throws her, and she breaks something, I guess. I don't really know, he... But she's bleeding, you know? She, he starts looking up her blood and he's like, oh my god, you taste so good. I think he breaks something also because I hear a crack. I don't know. This is literally so gross. Like, he's so sick and twisted. But, like, it was really disgusting. I, like, I kind of zoned out because, you know, it was disgusting to me. Edward comes out of nowhere. He pulls, um, what's his name? He pulls James off of her and throws him off to the side. And James is like, LOL, you're such an idiot for coming by yourself. Word, la, 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 la. they start fighting bella gets thrown around some more um james somehow manages to bite her on the wrist and now she's convulsing because you know she has vampire venom in her system and that is supposed to be a very painful experience because like she's i guess in the beginning processes of transitioning or something also she's convulsing they're fighting the rest of the cullen clan oh, the rest of the cullen clan shows up Car carlisle is like edward look after bella you need to look after bella jasper emmett and alice rip off james head and set him on fire effectively killing him edward decides to suck the venom out of her because he doesn't want her to turn into a vampire but like let's be honest if she turned into a vampire right then and there none of their future problems would have you know none of their future problems would have occurred except maybe the cgi creepy cgi baby because who really knows the logistics behind that you know bella and eddie are always defying the odds bella passes out and she wakes up in a hospital she's monologuing about how 
death is easy it's life that's hard she wakes up in the hospital her mom is like over there and her mom is like oh my god bella i'm so happy you're safe you're gonna love it in jacksonville we're gonna move to jacksonville you're gonna love it there you're gonna have your own bathroom it's so sunny there and so fun and awesome and bella's like no i want to stay in forks and renee is like right you sleep on that and she leaves the story by the way that they're telling everybody is that um bella tripped on the hotel stairs and flew through a window when edward and charlie went to convince her to come back to forks i don't know how they convinced everybody of that one but they did you know what not our circus not our monkeys not our problem edward who was pretending to be sleeping while renee was talking to her he comes up to bella and he's like you have to stay in jacksonville to stay safe from me bella starts panicking she's like no you can't leave me we can't be apart girl do i have some news for you i guess bella managed to convince her mom that she does in fact want to stay in forks because now bella's you know out of the hospital she's coming down the stairs of charlie's house she's wearing her little dress she has her little hair up and a little hairdo she has her little cast on and she's going to prom with edward and she's at prom with edward she's like just hanging out i guess edward went to do something i don't know but she's sitting on a random bench by herself jacob is there for some reason in the forest he's leaning against she's like hi bella and she's like are you crashing my prom he's like no apparently his dad paid him 20 dollars <laughs> to tell bella to break up with edward and also to warn her that they're watching and for some reason this was the perfect time for jacob to come tell her to do whatever edward comes and sweeps her away and he makes this funny little quip about i leave you alone for two minutes and the wolves descend it's funny because she doesn't get it yet so it's like an inside joke between edward and himself and us if we know what's happening but bella doesn't know they're having a good time dancing the night away until bella's like edward i want to be a vampire he's like girl what no i'm not ending your life she's like every day i'm growing older every day i'm at the risk of dying blah blah blah. i'm going to die of old age and he's like well yeah everybody's at the risk of dying every day and also i want you to grow old and live a good human life and she's like i want to live forever with you they're both so weird why does he like dip her like you know like take her into a little bit of a dip and he's like i could end you right now and she's like oh my god yes 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 please 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 oh my god yes right now and like she closes her eyes like all excited and everything right and she just and he instead just kisses her neck like yeah bella come on you're supposed to be a smart girl he's not going to turn you in the middle of a school dance the point is to keep his identity hidden and to keep him and his family safe like get it together anyway bella decides that her ultimate goal in life her ultimate desire and final final ultimate wish in life is to be a vampire interesting and they continue to dance the night away the movie's not over yet because guess who's creeping on them uh build a few buildings away looking at them creeping creeping at them through a window one third of our murder trio victoria or half of our murder duo because jay what the movie ends with her walking away from the window with a little bit of a smirk on her face and that's it that's the movie like i said i think the timeline was longer in the books but in the movie it's so crazy that this all happened over the course of like what two and a half months maybe three at most and she's already so in love with edward she's so obsessed with him already it's quite concerning if i'm being honest like genuinely it's concerning it makes sense for edward because you know she's like his maid her his blood singer whatever he feels the pool but does bella feel the same pool to him like as a human like i genuinely don't remember and you know what i don't care that creepy eddie is only 17 and he's 17 for life i don't care that his frontal cortex never developed and it never will he's still 100 years older than her and you know what at least he has a common sense to be like i don't want to turn you i want to i want you to live a good long human life but bella bella is like no i don't want to grow old i'm so scared of growing old like edward i want to live with you forever girl be serious right now be serious right now the movie overall wasn't as bad as i was expecting it to be going in like i'm not a movie connoisseur but i thought it was pretty good you know what i mean like there were a few things that just didn't need to happen there were a few things that made no sense but overall it was enjoyable i like the cinematography and also it's crazy that as a child when i first you know had my first interaction with this um franchise i was eating it up i was defending it like no other but now i'm like oh oh i see i see all the problems but it's weird because it's still enjoyable 
because of how ridiculous it is and how unrealistic it is you know what i mean and the acting let's let's not talk about the acting everybody was so awkward i'm going to hope it was like on purpose because I enjoyed it. I'm sorry, I enjoyed how awkward they all were. My final thoughts, Edward sucks, Bella is kind of stupid, Jacob is weird, Charlie deserves better, Jessica and Rosalie are not the haters I thought they were when I was first reading slash watching the series. Rosalie especially deserves better from her family. I really want to know what Rosalie, Emmett, Carlisle, and Esme were cooking for Bella the, when they like when they first met her. I really want the Cullen house. Um, the blue filter is iconic. Okay, that's it. Bye!